Frank Beta to come to the platform and lead us in prayer. Dad, would you come and lead this camp meeting service in prayer? I hope I haven't just scared him to death with the dignitaries on the platform. But this man and my mother prayed for me, and there's one reason I'm a Christian tonight. And it would be a delight and an honor for him to lead this camp meeting crowd to the Lord in prayer tonight. And as he prays, let's all lift our voice to heaven. God wants to see us and do a mighty work among us tonight. Amen. Brother Frank Bailey. I would like to leave my testimony before I pray. God's grace has always been sufficient for the problems that arise in their life. Whether you're flying corn, or working a sawmill, or snaking logs, or driving a truck, God will always be with you. Isn't that right? Amen. If you believe that, say amen. 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 Our precious, loving Heavenly Father, we come before thee tonight. We are absolutely beyond any shadow of a doubt standing on your promises. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, one day we read in the Testament that we confess our sins. You are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. We're glad, Heavenly Father, tonight that that's true. We're glad you gave us a new life, turned us around, we did an about face. And we know, Heavenly Father, tonight, your word teaches us to seek you first, the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto us. And we know what Jesus said before he went back, let not your heart be troubled, if you believe in God, also believe in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and I'm coming again. Praise the Lord, we're looking for Christ tonight. We know, Heavenly Father, tonight, that you know about each heart that's here, what they have need of. We know, Heavenly Father, you're able to anoint the message tonight, to start your singing. Oh, God, this will be a good night for someone to turn their heart over to thee. We recommend our Savior tonight, Lord, for anyone to just look to thee. Have your way, Lord, in each heart and mind. Open our hearts and minds tonight, Lord, we may receive the word. And go out this time and night with a greater determination to serve you. Amen. We know, Heavenly Father, that you gave your life some 2,000 years ago for us. And we know, Heavenly Father, you love and want to help each one here tonight. So have your way, we pray in our hearts and lives. Help us to do your will, Lord. Bless this great district, this great state, this great United States in which we live. So God, have your way again, we pray, in our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dad. I grew up in a layman's home. Most of the time he was a Sun School superintendent, Christian Life chairman, and I appreciate the influence and the heritage that I have. I'd like for my mother to stand. I didn't introduce them last night. Glad to have you, Mom. Also, our special guest with us this evening, Reverend Mrs. Keith Bottles, District Superintendent of our neighboring district, Chicago Central. Dr. Brother and Mrs. Sister Bottles, would you please stand? Joan is right down here, and Brother Bottles right here. We're glad that they're here with us. Amen. We know that Northwest is the best district in Illinois, and Chicago Central is a close second. Amen. <laughs> Dr. and Mrs. Leslie Perry, Laura Lee, God bless you. So glad you're here. Would you stand? Amen. We're so glad that you're with us. This I've asked Dr. Perry to bring greetings to us from Olivet Nazarene University. I've known Dr. Perry for a number of years. I consider him a very dear friend. He has had a tremendous impact upon my life, many of his philosophies. He believes in a big God, believes in doing things in a big way, and that has impacted me and influenced me. It is an honor and a thrill to be on Olivet Region and to be a part of Olivet Nazarene University. Dr. Perry, would you come and address this great body? God bless you. Thank you, and it's a joy to be here tonight on a Saturday evening of camp meeting. Anybody that's here on Saturday night in 
tent meeting has come on purpose. And I know that means you're here to be blessed and helped and inspired and instructed and directed and all those other things that we're going to receive tonight from Reverend Strickland. Has he been preaching all right? Is it all right? You're sure? I came over to check up on him. I want to be sure his theology is still sound and he's going down the middle of the road. I've preached in camp meetings with him and I do appreciate him so very much. And of course it's good to see the Laxons. I drive about as far to hear them sing as anybody I know. And they're wonderful people. Have they been doing it all right? Oh, I'm sure they have. I don't know Brother Helms over here, but I know the publishing house he comes from, and I'm sure that it all has been going well. I was, I don't know how I could have been more pleased when I got the word after your uh, voting last year. I had to leave before you had finalized all that was in the process, and I got word that uh, Reverend Tom Bailey had been uh, chosen, and you had affirmed the election, and everything was in order. And I tell you, I took a great big sigh of relief. I guess I come near having a case of high anxiety every time we change district superintendents than I do at any other one thing that happens on our educational region. We're going to be changing superintendents in Northwest Indiana, and I'm already nervous about that, and they won't be meeting for a couple of months yet. But nonetheless, when I saw you go through the process and you came out with this good man, I think you're fortunate, and I think he's fortunate, and I just am so glad that he's here. I assume Mrs. Bailey is here somewhere. I didn't see her. Are you here, Miss Bailey? Where is she? Oh, back there. That's, well, let's give her a hand. Let's clap for everybody else tonight. She's a lovely lady. We just came from the first of our ten district assemblies. Uh, my summer ends the 4th of July. And from the 4th of July to the 3rd week of August, we have 10 district assemblies, and then school starts. So it means that uh, we have had the first one, and I tell you, if the rest of them are like this first one, we're in for the greatest year that we've known on our educational region. The Chicago Central District started 14 new churches last year and had a net gain a net gain of 661 members on that district. I think that's pretty terrific, don't you? I think we ought to give Brother Bottle that. And I should have said before, that, uh, before I had us clapping for him that the finances were all in line and they had 80% of their Olivet budget paid and the advisory board met at noon and decided they were going to go for the rest of it, some 20000 and they raised it so that they're up over the 90%, and that just nearly everything I could think of was positive over there. And it's good to come from that atmosphere into this atmosphere of camp meeting and all of the good things that are going here with you. I know your assembly will be in only a few weeks, and I'll plan to be here for that experience and look forward to it and hear all the good reports from this district. I don't know anything of an ill report to bring to you about all of that. George Lyons is doing a good job. Is that George Lyons down there? I think that's the first time in my life I've ever seen him when he didn't have on a suit coat. And I had to look twice to be sure that that was the doctor. But I guess it is. And uh, I know you're proud to have him from your district. And we're proud to have him as a member of the faculty of Olivet Nazarene University. Looks like we're going to be in the black again. Looks like the, the uh, operation of the radio station that I know will cover a great portion of your district is going to be expanded and improved. And we have a new man with a PhD in communications who's coming to work at that. Everything I know is positive and good, and we thank God for it. And I'm just glad I could be here with all of you, and particularly with your district superintendent and his wife.
super ten. You remember what it, what it what's going to be, do you? Did you make sure you do? And here we go, we're here last night. And of course, we said if we would go over $1,500, he said, in the offering last night, he would play his guitar and sing us a song. Isn't that correct? And we're holding him to it tonight, and he's going to come and play his guitar and sing it for us tonight. God bless you. Brother Amen. Amen. Now, he wanted to do this, we want to do this before the offering, you see. For after the offering tonight, there's no telling what he might do tomorrow. Amen. Yes, when I need to appear dignified, I am playing the guitar and singing. Dr. Perry, all the bottles are here. And, uh, when I really need to put on the best deal, when you start taking off and you just get desperate. So watch these folks and don't let them leave, all right? Till he came and put his arms around me.
John chapter number 4, and we'll begin our reading with verse number 46, Gospel of St. John chapter 4, verse number 46. While you're finding that place, I'd like to remind you just once again that 1986, Amsterdam, Billy Graham Convention of Evangelism, perhaps one of the most significant spiritual, profound significant spiritual impacts ever on my life. I haven't gotten over it yet, and I'm thankful for what the Lord can teach every one of us. There in that tremendous conference, there were some ministers one evening who were deeply embarrassed. Two of them, Calvinists, good men, big shots, tremendous preachers, had delivered themselves and their souls about how miracles of healing no longer take place. That healing is not for us today. Now I happen to believe that the signs are gone. There's no more reason for them. I believe that tongues have ceased. I believe there are things of the past that do not need to be practiced today. I believe that people get caught up in some of the things dealing with signs and wonders and get off the beaten track of our Christ. But yet most of us, while we believe that signs have ceased, would still believe that God can and does still heal. Amen. And those ministers are embarrassed because a man by the name of Ted Smith, then Billy Graham's concert pianist, his man for a number of years, a great concert artist, he had been repairing the roof of his house, accidentally fell from the roof, and he injured his hand and his wrist and his elbow. Two of the doctors said he'd never be able to play, play the concert piano again. He would have to learn to play mostly with his left hand because he would be finished. There at that great conference with 10,000 evangelists of us, gathered from all across the nation and around the world, I think part of the impact on my life is because I stood beside third world country evangelists nearly every service. I had the opportunity to rub elbows and stand shoulder to shoulder, eyeball to eyeball with men who had never worn a suit, who didn't have shoes, but they were evangelists, delivering themselves every day, preachers of the gospel. I needed to be in that conference. A group of men gathered and said, we believe that the Lord Jesus could heal Ted Smith. Many of the ministers almost wished that it would never have happened, but it happened. They gathered around Ted Smith and he said, I'm willing to have whatever the Lord wants me to have. And God broke through and healed him. And Dr. Billy Graham, son thought he would never do it, but he did it. He was blessed, nearly beyond himself. Tears streaming down his face, I shall never forget. They blackened the building one night. They told the story. Ted Smith took his place. And suddenly the lights were out and the spotlight came down on his hands. And he just reared back and delivered one of the greatest concerts that we've ever heard. A living testimony that God is still able to break through and heal. We believe that God can and does heal. We know that God does not heal everybody of everything every time. We also agree tonight that God is the only one who knows why he doesn't heal everybody of everything every time. And most of us would agree tonight we believe that it is God's will to heal more people than are being healed. So tonight, as we spend these few minutes together, sit in the presence of the Christ. Allow him to slip up close to where you are as I read this passage. Begin with verse 46, John chapter number 4. He came therefore again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. There was a certain royal official whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea 
into Galilee, he went to him and was requesting him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Jesus therefore said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he started off. And as he was now going down, his slaves met him, saying that his son was living. So he inquired of them the hour when he began to get better. They said therefore to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed, and his whole household. This again, the second sign that Jesus performed when he'd come out of Judea into Galilee. One night following a rather dead, dry, dull service, revival service, when it just seemed like not much was going to happen and no one seemed to care anything did or didn't, we were getting ready to leave, to go to the restaurant to get a bite to eat. We started out at the side, the crowd had already gone, and the pastor and his wife were waiting for me. Suddenly a man said to me, Dick, would you anoint me for my little baby boy? I've been in a lot of eating services, anointing services as you have. I said, sir, I'm not too good at this. I don't see very many healings take place. But if you really think that we should, believe the Lord is in it, we'll pause long enough to do that came down to the altar. I had to almost beg three people to come down to pray. And I want you to know I didn't feel a thing. I didn't feel like praying. It was a dead, a dead, dead, dead place. The three of us gathered and we placed our hands on the man and prayed a very, very simple, short prayer. No one got emotional. No one was carried away. No one even got loud in their talking. I'm not against any of that. That's good. I have to get loud from time to time. Nobody put fingers into his ears. And nobody cried. Nobody shed a tear. Just did it because of daddy. Said my nine-month-old son is in the hospital. He has a cancerous tumor in the very center of his spinal cord. The size of a tennis ball. And it's already made inroads. And his vital signs are going down fast. And in all probability, my little boy will be gone before the weekend. We anointed that daddy. Just a simple prayer. Said wherever little boy is tonight, reach through, blessed Savior, and touch him and heal him. No one, I don't suppose any one of us, thought anything happened. The next night, the service was in full swing. Suddenly a daddy stepped in. He had his hand up. And the tears were streaming down his face. Would it be all right if I give a word of testimony? Come right on down. You could tell that victory was all over again. This was the story. I'll just hit the highlights. Last night, it was ten minutes after nine, when you laid your hands on me with oil in the name of the Lord. I didn't have much faith, and I didn't feel anything. But the doctor was making his final rounds at the hospital. And he likes my little boy, he's just a little baby. And he walked into my son's room and just one tiny light was on, not very much light at all. He said, nurse, let's make the little boy as comfortable as possible in his last few hours of life. Let's change the dressing now. Two nurses came in and one of them took off the old wrappings and dressing and the other one said, look. The other one came running and said, what is it? They went out and got the doctor, brought him back over. The doctor said, I cannot believe it. I've never seen anything like this happen before. The cancer was gone. And the Lord had broken me in and healed me. Say, Dick, why doesn't he do it every time? Went to God, but I had the answer. I do not have the answer. 
But as I was reading this passage tonight before church, I saw some things that I believe that each of us could do tonight. If I had the gift that could come back and lay my hands on you, I would heal you. And I know my good friend, Dr. Perry, well enough to know. We have preached in camps. To me, he's the prince of preachers in our denomination. I do not say that. I have no reason to collaborate with him. I love to be with him and listen to him preach. He's my kind of preacher. I know that Dr. Perry come right down to where you are tonight and place his hands on you. He would pray the prayer of faith for you. He'd like to see you healed. I know my friend Keith Falls would, Tom Bailey would, Wally Lacks, and any of us would. I think if I had the gift of healing, if there is that kind of a thing, I'd spend my days in the hospital. Wouldn't you? Placing my hands on them and seeing them brought to health and wholeness. I don't have that. But I want to give you some things that I've discovered in this little passage. Just take a few minutes of your time, please. Seven things that I want you to think about in this service. Number one, this man simply reviewed the case. He had heard someplace that Jesus Christ could get the job done. He reviewed in his mind. He began thinking about the promises that he heard other people talk about. And he approached the Christ. Tonight, I would like for every one of us, as we're bringing this message, just review the promises that he brings to you, the healing promises of Christ. Secondly, repent. This official came to Christ. We do not see what we ordinarily term, tabulate, consider, categorize as sin. But Jesus turned to him and said, you desire a sign. You desire a wonder, and you won't believe anything unless you see it. Jesus was putting him to the test, and he saw the man was straight as a die. He wasn't there just for sensationalism. He wasn't running out across the country after every little old evangelist and every big evangelist. He wasn't looking for stimulation and sensation. He was looking for Christ. He reviewed and then repented as he turned to Christ. He said, Sir, in a very real way, he said, Sir, I'm not looking for just a sign. I'm not looking for a wonder. And tonight, as I bring this simple message, could you think of any hidden sin, any covered thing in your life, anything in your attitude or anything in your behavior? Christ might look to you and say, You're not willing to give this up. You're not willing to change this. You're looking for a sign, for a wonder. If we could honestly approach him and say, No. I'm looking for whatever you want me to have. I believe we can repent of anything that is outside His will. Fourth or thirdly, simply relax. Notice the official, when Jesus told him what to do, your son's healed. Some of us would have stayed there and we'd have hammered him on the shoulder and said, Are you sure? I've got to be sure. I'm not going to go until I have a sign or know for certain that it's happened, but I feel that the man just relaxed as he heard the word of Christ, and he said, I'm going to go and see, and he did. Would you just sit back and relax tonight, and allow him to take away your anxiety, and take away your fear? One thing I've learned about Christ Jesus, and you have too, you can relax in him, and with him, and by him. He's Christ. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. So relax in Christ. Next, this man made a request. The word requested is used. He just simply said, Jesus, my boy, it's done. I ask you to heal him. Jesus said, you're looking for a sign. I wonder, no, I'm not. I believe you can do it. He just flat out made a request. Jesus, heal my boy. He's all right away. So your next point then is, or your next part is just simply make a request. And in your request, here's what I want you to ask for. Say, blessed Savior, just give me your best. That's all I ask you for. Like the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace, we know our God will deliver. But if he doesn't, he's still our God anyway. And so 
so you make the request for God's best in your life. Next, just release what little faith you have. May not be much, but turn it loose. Say, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. I don't have much faith, but such as I have, I give to you. Whatever faith you can muster, you don't have to work it up. So you pray it down, just release. Release the problem. Release it into the hands of the Lord and release what faith you have. The next, receive. This official turned and in a way, in a very wonderful way, said, I just believe and I'll receive. I'll take you at your word, Lord. I believe it's happened. I'll receive your best. You do that tonight. And the last thing, he was rejoicing. And under rejoicing, just put down, repeat, repeat, and tell the old, old story again and again. He began telling the story while he was rejoicing, and his whole family got saved. His wife and his kids, the whole household came to Christ, because they wanted to know him too. Bless the Lord, we bow our heads tonight in your presence. We do not ask for a wonder. We do not ask for a sign. We just ask for Christ, for your best. We ask that in this closing moment of this message, there would be a great number of people across this congregation. We have heard the healing messages preached. We've heard the illustration on top of illustration. We have heard the old timers talk about how God has broken through and how he has healed them. We know there are psychosomatic healings. We know that there are mental healings. Tonight, we're turning everything we know over to you. We are not asking for a humanistic move of any kind. We're not asking for some guru to teach us. We're not asking tonight for some new age seer to explain to us the power of the mind. We want to relax in Christ and accept and receive your best, whatsoever you will, for us. That's our cry tonight, in Jesus' name. Now with those points in mind, in the quietness of this moment, just while in ginger seeing something in the way of an invitation, something they deem appropriate, I'd like to ask you to just get up from where you are if you can, make your way to the nearest aisle, to the altar of God. I'd like to ask you to get up and come now. If you'd like to kneel at the altar, you may. If it is such that it would be much more comfortable for you to be seated in the front seat, that would be fine. Just get up and come. We want you to be comfortable, not challenged, not intimidated. Find a place to be seated or stand. Listen as they say, come on.
the first few words, then you can either utter them aloud or silently, whichever is best. But as you say this prayer, make it yours, not just mine. Blessed Heavenly Father, I know you promised to make me whole. I want to claim your promise of healing this moment. I now repent of and just take a moment of silence and talk it over with Jesus. Maybe an attitude problem, an interpersonal relationship, perhaps behavioral thing in your life. Just pause for a moment and say, I repent of, and just name that to the Lord. You don't need to name that to any of us. He already knows. Tell him you're sorry. Ask him to forgive. And Lord, I repent of anything else in my life that hinders your power. I let go of my anxiety. I let go of my fear. Relaxing in the full assurance that you love me and you want the best for me. And now the prayer continues. Father, I ask you to do what is best. I reach out to you now in faith, trusting that you will accomplish your purpose in my life. I open every door of my mind. I open every area of my body. I open every part of my spirit to receive your answer to this prayer. And I promise to rejoice and praise you unashamedly for what you choose to do in my life. I ask this in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Savior. Amen. And now, Lord, as you stand close at the very periphery of this moment, at the very edge of our lives, we look to you we're helpless, but with you all things can be accomplished. Now as these people wait, we wait in your presence, we're going to ask the elders, all of the elders in the sanctuary, please rise and come and stand on the inside, some of you on the inside of the altar, others to gather around, and then our district superintendent will give further instructions as how we might be able to serve you better. While you're waiting, say, Lord Jesus, I trust you and only you. I want the elders to stand on this side, and I want them to pass the oil.
find someone else who is kneeling or sitting there. I will be there with you. I have asked Reverend Keith Bottles to come to the microphone and lead us in prayer as we now lay hands, anoint with oil, and believe God for a miracle. It will happen. And as the elders pray in this very sacred moment, I would like for you to bow your heads and pray and ask God to perform a miracle in these lives and these bodies tonight. For the body. Jesus, we thank you for the fact that you came into this world. You walked the shores of Galilee to know the human side of man. You know there is weakness of these physical bodies and ailments. We thank you this evening that Jesus knows all about the soul. He knows all about these bodies. These people have expressed their desire to come and by faith claim the promises of the Lord. Let there be a promise tonight that will inspire the faith. They can claim that promise tonight. Lord, you know every every person kneeling here, everyone that has come. We pray that as these elders lay on hands and anoint with oil, we are reminded of James. Said, any be sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church, the laying on of hands. We believe they have confessed their sins. If not, may they confess their sins tonight. And we know the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Lord, let our faith reach out and touch the hem of the garment and make that one whole. We claim this in the name of Jesus by the power of the shed blood. Believe it in the name of Jesus. Amen.
taken place today. Not because of man, but because of who God is. We believe that with all of our heart. Shall we stand this evening and close this wonderful service in prayer? And those of you who were here and were anointed and prayed with, shall we go trusting the blessed Savior? He will never disappoint us and never let us down. Praise God. Our fathers, as we close this service,